My sister wants to be back in my life. The same sister who falsely accused me of SAing her. This story takes place seven years ago. At this time, I, 18M, and my biological sister, 15F, had always gotten into arguments. They would be small petty things, but then blew up because we just didn't get along. My father at the time was in his third marriage, and his new wife brought in three daughters. So, I had four younger sisters, one biological sister, and three stepsisters. My family was military, and we got sent to a military station in Japan. One day during a summer before school, our parents told us three teenagers, my biological sister, stepsister, and I, were told that one of us would be sent back to our families in the United States due to the constant fighting. It was ultimately decided that my biological sister would be sent back to live with our biological mother, while the rest of us stayed. At that time, I was starting 12th grade. My stepsister 10th grade and my biological sister would be starting her freshman year of high school. A few months into the school year, I get brought into my parents' room saying, we need to talk. To my shock, it was that my biological sister had accused me of SAing her and said it was done when we were kids. My parents asked me about what she could be talking about and the only incident was when I was 11, I said something inappropriate in front of her that I learned on the internet. I got apprehended for it and was taught my lesson. My parents and my three younger stepsisters learned that my biological sister is a pathological liar and was caught multiple times in said lies. My parents said that due to this, I was no longer allowed to babysit my two younger siblings still in elementary school and that I had to always be with my teenage stepsister or an adult with them. When I called them out on believing a pathological liar, they said, we don't believe her, but we have to take this seriously. My response to them was, if you take this seriously, then you are fueling her fire more. This led to me being shunned by most of my family on my mom's side and my dad's side, besides an aunt, uncle, and a few cousins. Fast forward two years later, I am about to be shipped out into the military with my aunt and uncle, who didn't believe my sister, and then I got a call from my mother saying that my sister was in the hospital for trying to take her own life. I asked how this pertains to me, since she knew how I felt about my sister, and she said that with her recovering from the incident, the truth came out that she fabricated the essay. Immediately, my mother apologized to me and said that my biological sister's reasoning was that he seemed so happy over there. I thought nothing of it and accepted my mother's apology. Fast forward to today where I am now, 25M, and I have moved on with my life, but I have still not forgiven her and I don't plan to. I have served almost six years in the military, and most of my family has tried to or did apologize for everything that happened with my sister, and didn't believe her for a second. My same family keeps on asking if I would ever sit down with her to talk about it, and I always refuse, saying I love her as a sister, but will never like her as a person. She has told family that she's willing to patch things up to me if I apologize to her about the situation, and I outright laughed and said hell no. My family keeps on hounding me that she's my only real sibling, but I have three younger sisters, my stepsisters, who still view me as their older brother with no issues, and I am now uncle to my sister's new son. I don't want or feel that I have any obligations to sit down with her to fix things because of the seriousness of her actions. But my family is saying that I should mend things, since that is my blood, and blood is family. So, am I the a-hole for not wanting to reconcile with my sister after she falsely accused me of SA? Not the a-hole, 100%. This man was falsely accused of something terrible, and we have seen so many stories like this on this channel before, where that derails or ruins a person's life. And then the other person isn't heard out or even believed. They're just like, oh, this one person said this, and we're not even going to listen to your side of the story. I don't know if OP tried to explain himself to the other side, uh, the other family members. Uh, I'm going to assume he did, maybe? But if he doesn't want to talk to his biological sister, then good riddance, get rid of her. But if he did, and let's just say if I was in his situation, and if I did, I would need proof that she got some help about the pathological liar stuff. I'd be like, all right, after you go to a shrink or a psychiatrist or a freaking Walgreens and get some pills, then maybe we can talk. But I need to know you are a better person before I have you back in my life. But anyway, what do you guys think about this one? Next story. Story number two, wife 37F and I for 40M are arguing about her father, 65M, moving in with us. What should we do? There's a lot of background here, so I'll try and keep it to what's relevant. 
We have been married for 10 years, dated for three before that, and we have two kids. Her parents are divorced. Her mom comes from a wealthy family, and when her parents got married, her family did a lot of legal and financial stuff and prenups and stuff like that to keep the money safe. Growing up, her mom was busy a lot and was the primary breadwinner. Her dad really was the one who raised her. He was the one who took her and picked her up from school, who helped her with her homework and went to her shows, plays, games, etc. When she was 12, it turned out her mother had been having an affair, and it led to her parents divorcing. This is where her mom's family's money comes in. They were able to afford very good lawyers, and her money had already been locked up tight, so she would end up with custody, and he left the marriage with not very much to his name, and since he had to spend so much time raising her, he had neglected his own career. He struggled after that. My wife has a fraught relationship with her mother. She never really forgave her mother for the affair, the divorce, and her destroying his life. Once she was a teenager, she chose to move in with her dad. So that's a bit of background. Then she remained close to her dad to this day. He's been an active part of our lives and he spends a lot of time with our kids who both love him, but he's been struggling. COVID was really hard for him because he really couldn't walk. He fell behind on his bills and he's been struggling to catch up ever since. He's now about to be evicted. My wife wants him to move in with us. She says it's absolutely unacceptable for him to be homeless when we have a basement we can move him into. The thing is, the basement is my space. It's set up to be my retreat, and she now wants to turn it into a bedroom for him. We've been arguing about this because she says she won't allow him to be homeless, and my point is he won't be homeless. He has a place he can go with his sister, but she lives on the other side of the country. My wife hates that idea. She says she wants him to be a part of her and our kids' lives and not on the other side of the country. He's not a bad guy. I don't hate him or anything. I just want some space for our family. My wife's position is that he is family and he can help with the kids. She's accusing me of caring more about my man cave than the well-being of her father. That is an exaggeration. He isn't going to be homeless. He can move in with his sister. This argument is starting to become pretty ugly now and she's threatening to take the kids and move out to find a place with him if I won't agree to let him move in here. I resent that threat. I'm starting to wonder if this is really a hill I should die on. On the other hand, I'm shocked and angry that my wife seems ready to throw away our whole marriage over this. Update. I'm going to talk to my wife about getting him an in-law suite in our yard that he can stay in permanently and give up the basement until we can build it. The comments have helped me play out how the most likely scenarios would go. Just so everyone knows whose side you're all taking here, she is a spoiled rotten princess who grew up with a silver spoon in her mouth. Everything she has was given to her. Between my salary and the trust fund her grandparents left her, she doesn't need to work, but she does so anyway and complains she needs her dad's help with the kids. I'm a surgeon and she is an interior designer. Which of us do you think contributes more to humanity? She is a shallow, vapid woman who decorates houses while I am saving lives. Now here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, You are ready to throw away your marriage for protecting your man cave. She is protecting her father. Maybe you have a sister in a different state that you could live with instead if it's no big deal. Then user 2 commented and said, OP, you said you just want some space for your family. This is a lie. You want the space from your family. You described it as a retreat. She's not endangering your marriage, you are, but you're trying to spin this story to make it look like she's being unreasonable when you're simply upset to losing your man cave. Let him stay, build a shed. Then user 3 commented and said, I mean, it looks like your wife decided it's her hill to die on, so is it yours? But from my perspective, I have to be honest, I think you're being a jerk. You're shocked and angry that your wife would die on this hill to move her dad in, who really was the parent who raised her because the only other option is moving him across the country. But you're dying on the hill of having a man cave. Really makes you look selfish from my perspective. And then finally, user 4 commented and said, Are you for real? Your position would be easier to understand if you had no room, but you do. Let me ask you something. Does your wife have a space in your home that is exclusively hers? That she can retreat to? in order to rest or practice her hobbies? If the answer is no, why doesn't she? Why are you the only one who gets the luxury of having such a space? Why is your man cave, let's be honest, that's what it is, more important than housing the man who raised your wife? Why do you get to monopolize a whole basement that is solely for your benefit? This is a hill worth dying on for her. Maybe this is the first step towards realizing she's married to a very selfish man. Then OP replied with and said, no, because my wife doesn't work on call in a high pressure job as a surgeon like I do. She doesn't need a space to unwind after she loses a patient like I do.
Update. My husband is a surgeon, and according to him, he's the most important person in the world. A god among men who casually determines life or death, and is far too important to be bothered by the trivial concerns of us mere peons. Concerns like maybe you should spend some time with your effing kids, but oh no. You see, he works so hard and has so much pressure that when he's home, he has to be sequestered from the annoying sounds of our girls playing or, you know, being happy to see him. My dad has picked up the slack. He's been the one that's changed their diapers. I drop them off at school and go to work. Dad picks them up and stays with them till I get home. My dad was the one who taught them to ride a bike. My dad is the one who shows up to the plays and dance recitals. He's the one that helps them with the homework. My dad is the one who dresses as Santa. My dad is the one who does the Easter egg hunts and the tea parties. My husband is far too important for any of that. And despite the fact that my husband has absolutely no interest in our kids, he is still pissed that the kids are closer to my dad than him. So my dad is now struggling financially. We have the means to help him, but my husband doesn't want to. He'd rather see my dad moved to the other side of the country and removed from our kids' lives. I put my foot down and he goes on to Reddit to whine about it. Well, now I'm here too, dear. You want to whine about our marriage on Reddit? I can do it too. Update. Wow, this all blew up. I was so angry when I posted this, but now I'm just drained. He came by yesterday to pick up some things and we argued. The girls were out with my dad because I knew this would be a fight and I didn't want them to be around. He said awful things, just awful, about me, my dad, and the girls. After he left, I talked to my mom. We have a difficult relationship, but if there's one person I want in my corner going into the divorce, it's her. The divorce is happening. I saw an attorney my mom recommended today. I'm really glad I went through with that prenup my mom wanted when we got married now. At this point, I won't speak to my soon-to-be ex-husband. My lawyer is doing my talking for me. I am exhausted. Thank you to everyone for all the support. It helped to read the comments and know people supported me. He made me feel so small and stupid yesterday, and he said awful things about our girls. I'm not mad anymore. I'm just heartbroken. Our girls deserve better than this. I really wanted better for them. I just wanted to have a family and a nice home. Now I'm just going through a divorce like my parents. I never wanted this. I tried so hard to keep this all together so we didn't wind up here, but I failed. And then in the comment section, the husband made a comment on his original post, which was deleted. But the wife made a reply and said, I'm done. This isn't about the man cave or the space and you know it. We have the money to help my dad. We have a seven bedroom freaking house with a pool house and a movie theater. This isn't about space or money. This is about you being petty and jealous that the girls are closer to my dad than you. Get this through your effing thick head. That's your fault. For nine years, everything else in your life has been more important than the girls. You work 70 hours a week, and when you're not at work, you go golfing with the people you work with, or you're at a medical conference with the people you work with, or you're dragging me to some fundraiser with the people you work with. When you are at home, you need to sequester yourself because the sound of my children playing annoys you. You seem to conveniently forget that they are your children too. You only seem to remember that part when I want to move my father in to help me with our girls. It's amazing how you can be so smart and so effing stupid at the same time. You are upset the girls love dad more than you, and you're such a petty and small man that your solution is to ship them off out of their lives and break our girls' hearts. But you don't plan to actually be a part of their lives. You just want my dad gone, and I won't freaking let you take him out of their lives. The family is me, the girls, and my father. Your family are the people you work with, and you're married to your job, not me. Well, you can have it. Don't come home. Stay at the hospital or go to your mistress's house. Yeah, I know about her, and I don't freaking care anymore. I'm done. I'm done trying to make this marriage work. I'm done begging you to be a father. The girls won't miss you anyways. You've never shown an interest in their lives, and I am done letting you hurt and neglect my children. They deserve someone in their lives that loves and cares for them and shows interest in them. You don't. You want to drag this out onto Reddit? Then fine. Let's do this on Reddit. I'm divorcing you. We're done. Go save the world. You're free. By the way, you're worse than your parents. They may have been weird and misguided, but they were at least part of your life. And now he wants to talk about this in private, everyone. Now he has a problem with this being on Reddit. You're the one who brought it here, honey. Deal with your bed that you made. 
Now, here are some relevant comments from the wife on if it was about the man cave or not. It had nothing to do with the space. He was pissed off that the girls are closer to my dad than him, and he's such a pettier, small, insecure man that he would rather break our girls' hearts and take my dad from their lives than do anything. We have the space and the money. We have a freaking pool house we will be moving my dad into. He's not really going to lose his man cave. This was never about his man cave. And there's no coming back from this. He'd rather break our girls' hearts than be a part of their lives. He was complaining to me the other day that if my father was here, then he would be playing with the girls when he was home. And the sound would annoy him. I just can't explain the rage I feel when I think about my husband. The father of my children being annoyed at the sound of his girls being happy. Then OP went on to elaborate on what her marriage is like and said, I'm not a stay-at-home parent. I also have a job. I'm also the only parent in this marriage. Everyone acts like I'm not working full-time too, but I still manage to make time for the kids. I get the kids up and dressed for school. My dad picks them up and stays with them until I get home. Kids get out at 3, I'm home by 6. My dad is there to pick up the kids and stays till I get home. Husband has no part in this. Also, you said in your comment that his concern about the children preferring their grandparent over him indicates a genuine desire to connect with his kids. And I would say that I've heard this before, but nothing ever changes. He complains and then tells me he has to go out of state to some medical conference and we'll talk about it later. And he never does. He just texted me now actually saying, I have surgery, we'll talk about this tonight. Yeah, he always has surgery when we need to talk about this. It's like clockwork, it never fails. And then finally, in the comment section, OP elaborated on the future of her marriage. Yes, we are headed to divorce. I'll be sending the papers to the freaking hospital. My dad is moving in, and my husband is moving out. We'll figure out the house in the divorce. I probably shouldn't say anything else at this point until I talk to an attorney. New updates. My ex-husband was never a very present father. He's a surgeon and spent most of his time either working or doing something with his co-workers. He was rarely ever home, and when he was, he mostly wanted to be left alone to hang out by himself in his man cave. He didn't like the girls being loud or playful because it disturbed him. Our daughters have walked on eggshells around him, and he's never taken much of an interest in their lives. So, we just finalized our divorce. He couldn't wait to get out of the marriage. He wanted to be done with this marriage and our kids so he could take a new job in another state and live with his affair partner. I asked for full custody and he was relieved. He didn't want custody. He didn't fight at all for them. He hasn't even seen them since the day he moved out two months ago. He's gone now in another state and my oldest had her 10th birthday about two weeks ago. I threw a really huge party for her. I made it a really big deal and he promised her he would be there. And he never showed. We got a card with a lame apology and a gift card from him a day after her birthday. I felt so bad for her. And what makes it worse is she wasn't even upset. I asked her how she felt about it and she shrugged and just said she wasn't surprised and that dad didn't really love them. What the hell do I say to that? I am at a loss for words because I don't believe he loves them either. Do I lie to them? Should I tell them of course he does and say he's just too busy? What do I tell her? The truth? No, he really doesn't love you? I have no idea what to say to my girls. Should I even bring it up? Just not talk about it at all? Just leave the fact that their dad doesn't care about them and has pretty much abandoned them? Just carry on as usual? Because, let's be honest, he hasn't been a part of our lives for a long time. He never really was. Not that much has changed for the girls besides the fact that they don't need to walk on eggshells for the one or two days a month he was even at home. I just, I don't know. Both the girls are in therapy now. We all are. Maybe this is something I should bring up there. Update. Two months later. Hi everyone, I'm back. My husband is now my ex-husband. In our state, you only need 30 days between filing and judgment. We both agreed divorce was best. He moved out New Year's Day and has never been back. My original post sorta went viral. It was reshared on TikTok and on Facebook and our family and friends wound up seeing it. My lawyer recommended I stop posting about the divorce until it was finalized. Well, the divorce is now done. After he moved out, we both retained our lawyers and most of the divorce was handled through them. We didn't speak much until we went into final arbitration and signed the agreements to bring to the judge. About a week after I retained my attorney, I had my attorney, his attorney, and some movers meet at my house to inventory everything that belonged to him, including his man cave. Then we had it packed up and shipped out to a storage unit his lawyer arranged. I didn't want to give him any reason to come after me for anything. I know people wanted me to nail him to the wall, but I really didn't want a long and bitter divorce. 
He wanted to go, I wanted him gone, and we both wanted it to happen as soon as possible. Turns out he was offered a job in another state, and he wanted to take it and was itching to get out of here. We had both prenups that made the division of assets pretty painless, and he had no problem with giving me full custody and paying child support. I didn't need or ask for spousal support. Honestly, how little he fought for our girls was the part that hurt me the most. The biggest disagreement we had was with the house. My mom stepped up to buy him out of the mortgage payments he put down so that me and the girls and my dad wouldn't have to move. He really wanted this done as fast as he could so he could ride off into the sunset with his affair partner and take his new job. And that's exactly what he did. He got the ending he wanted, free of me and the kids and free to be the world's best surgeon or whatever. Mom and dad both came through for me in big, big ways. Mom is a lawyer herself, and she had set up the house and my other assets to be protected. She also was the one to get me my lawyer. My dad moved into the pool house, and that's where he's going to stay. My dad is going to enjoy his golden years being pop-pop to our girls and dad to me. I'll make sure he won't have to worry about anything. My daughter's 10th birthday was two weeks ago. My husband promised her he would fly out for it. I made this party a really big deal. I hired performers, rented a bouncy castle, had all her classmates over. Most of my family was there. My mom and dad were able to be in the same place and not fight. We had a really great time, and he never showed up. She got a card from him the day after the party with a lame apology and a $500 gift card. I asked her if she was okay, and she shrugged. She had a great time at her party and didn't expect her dad to show. She knows he doesn't love her. That's what she told me. She wasn't really upset about it either. She's 10 years old and already expects him to disappoint her. It breaks my heart. But she's a trooper and she didn't let it stop her from enjoying her day. I realize that for years I've been trying to make a home for him to come home to, but he's had one foot out the door and I've been holding his hand trying to keep him from going. I finally let him go. I'm doing better than I thought I would be to be honest. And the girls are too. I don't really miss him. The girls don't really miss him. I'm not even angry about the affair. She can have him. I'm just disappointed. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that being a surgeon is not a stressful job. That being on call isn't stressful. And he does work a lot. So yes, I get it that someone needs to decompress. But you got a family. And if you want to be a good father, then you need to make some sort of compromise and be present in, uh, I guess, original OP. I had just no intentions of doing that. Because like the wife, OP number two, the sequel said he had one foot out the door the whole time and now the oldest girl is 10 years old and is already disappointed and doesn't expect anything from her father oh my goodness thank goodness op number two the sequel is taking everybody to therapy because they need it only because of the husband and what he did or didn't do i suppose but um hopefully everything works out for uh the the family and you know what surgeon dad go ahead do whatever you want i guess anyway what do you guys think on this one next story story number three my boyfriend has been ignoring me ever since I said no. I, 17F, have been dating Robert, 18M, for about five months. We met through a mutual friend, but started becoming closer once he asked for my number. I really like him. I'd even say love if it wasn't too early. He was my date to my school dance, he goes to a different school, and after the dance we went back to his house just to hang out. I changed out of my dress into sweats and a big shirt and just threw my dress over his desk chair. I went over to sit by him on his bed when he grabbed me and put me up on top of his lap. We started kissing until he started to pull my shirt up. I've never really been into the idea of sex or anything more than kissing, probably because I am a private person and just am, in my opinion, too young for that to interest me. I stopped kissing him and told him that I don't want it to escalate, and he immediately got upset at me. I tried to say never mind and we could do it, but he just got an attitude with me and gave me the cold shoulder. He walked out of the room and left me sitting on the bed. He slammed the door as he left. I was confused because he's never tried to do anything like that or act like that. He was sitting in the living room and texted me saying, leave, and I started to get all my stuff packed together. I got ready at his house. I was walking out the door when his mom asked why I was leaving, and I just told her my mom needed me home before it got too late. Like 10 minutes after I left, Robert called me asking where I went. I replied with, you told me to leave? And he got mad saying, I didn't mean it, you can't ever take a joke, come back. Then I told him it sounded serious, so I took it that way. And he hung up on me and has been ignoring me for three days. I asked our mutual friend if he's heard anything from him regarding me, and he said Robert was pissed he was never going to be able to hit. I don't know why he would say that, because he's never talked about me like that. Am I wrong here? What do I do? Edit. Thank you all for the advice. As of today, March 12th, 2024 at 8pm, 
Robert finally did reply to me and just told me that he wants to talk in person. I'm going to go over to his house tomorrow to discuss whatever there is to discuss. I'm not 100% sure how to use Reddit since this is my first time, so I'll try my hardest to update correctly. Now here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, It's okay if it's not right for you. Dump him and move on. He's just not the guy and that's okay. He's putting his needs before yours and it's clearly emotionally underdeveloped. Unfortunately, that's of this age. You can do so much better. Thank you for this comment. I feel like some people are blaming me for not seeing the red flags, but like I said before, he's never been like this at all. So those red flags weren't existent before this. Then user 2 commented and said, You are not in the wrong here. It sounds like he never even broached the subject with you before this. He wanted you, and when you rejected him, he showed how big of a baby he is. Cut him loose and find someone worthy of you. We never really talked about sex, but when it has been brought up, I try to shut it down because like I said, I'm not really into that. I thought by shutting down the idea when brought up, it would show him that I'm not really ready or into it. I probably should have elaborated more, but too late for that now, I guess. Then user 3 commented and said, Old guy says, sounds like trouble to me. I'd avoid being alone with him again. He can talk over the phone. Do you have a mom or an older sibling that you can trust and talk to? I have talked to my sister, who is 24 about it, and she told me the exact same thing all of you are saying. I only came to Reddit because I was feeling like I was in the wrong, and I needed more than just my sister's opinion. She's never liked Reddit, so maybe I thought she was biased? I don't know. But I understand now. And then finally, user 4 commented and said, This is a huge red flag. Get out now. He is abusive and controlling. He's young and may grow out of it, but I doubt that he will. How do his parents interact? That will give you some answers as how he is going to be with you. From what I have seen throughout these past five months, his parents are angels. His mom and dad act as if they are soulmates and would die if they lost each other. They have always been kind to me and my family, but I don't see things behind closed doors, so maybe it's all a front. Update. Hi everyone, this is an update to my post yesterday. I'd be lying if I said it went easy. And before I go into detail, please don't comment saying I told you so. Because I most definitely do not want to hear that, and 100% know who was right. But at the end of the day, I made the decision to go over and end it. Also, to get my things back. I'm glad I went over to further fully comprehend who he is, and if I could go back in time and do it again, I would. This will be a long update. I went over to his house at around 3, right after I got out of school and brought our mutual friend with me. I explained my side of the story to him, and he's on my side, and thinks it was disgusting of Robert to say that and act that way towards me. I wasn't too scared to go inside, since I knew I had backup, as well as his parents being home. I replied to a comment saying I wouldn't have agreed to go if they weren't there. We both walked up to the door and knocked. Robert opened the door and gave our friend, I'll call him Quentin, a nasty look. Robert asked Quentin why he was with me. Quentin said that he was there to make sure nothing happened. Robert invited us in, but kept the look on his face as Quentin walked in behind me. We went into his room where all my stuff was in a bag, and Quentin sat next to me on the bed while Robert sat in his desk chair. Before I could start talking, Robert cut me off to say how sorry he was and that he didn't mean to make me uncomfortable. I wanted to think it was a sincere apology, but because of this whole situation, there was no way it could be sincere. Then I said, I know you said you're sorry, but how do I know it won't happen again? I don't trust you anymore, and I can't be with someone I don't trust and his face immediately changed. I stood up to grab my bag of stuff when Robert sprung up and pushed me back onto the bed to make me sit down. Quentin got up and told Robert not to start stuff he can't finish. Robert got in Quentin's face and started yelling random insults at him and accusing Quentin of being the reason why I decided to end it. I stood up and told Robert to back off and that he ruined this relationship the second he tried to pressure me into sleeping with him. Robert shoved me and then that's when his dad came to the room. The yelling was loud enough for him to hear from the living room and seeing that I was just shoved, his dad yelled his name. Robert turned to the door and was standing there like he did nothing wrong. His dad told me that he would take it from here, and to get all my stuff, and if I forgot anything to message him and he would return it. Quinton grabbed the bag while I thanked his dad and we both left unscathed. I had a talk with his dad about what happened, and his dad basically chewed him out for how he treated me, and how that's not how you treat a woman. I thanked him again because he de-escalated the situation by coming in the room. Yeah, I was shoved and Quentin was insulted, but the both of us agreed that this is the best outcome. Robert's dad basically saved him from being beaten up in his own home by Quentin, who is 6'2 and 250 pounds. I'm lucky enough that this was the outcome and that I wasn't SA'd or anything of the sort. Thank you all for the advice, and for those of you who called me 
me as dumb as a doormat, this doormat left him. Robert is blocked and both I and his father will not allow him to reach out regardless of the circumstance. I appreciate all the concerns and worries, but I will not be dating anyone until I heal from whatever BS this was. Thank you, everyone. Now here are some final relevant comments. User 1 commented and said, I wish I had been as strong as OP when I was her age. I was only able to do it because of all the advice I got from everyone, and it helped boost my confidence. Then user 2 commented and said, I'm glad to hear you broke it off and you're safe. Take care of yourself. Then user 3 commented and said, You really made smart moves on your way out here, especially considering your age. I wish I had that kind of forethought and backup at that time in my life. Well done, and may you find healing sooner rather than later. You'll be alright. And then finally, user 4 commented and said, I saw this behavior coming from a mile away. You should always be wary of a guy who sulks and or throws a pity party after you say no to sex. It's a sign that a man will eventually become physically abusive towards you. I'm so glad you ended this relationship before he could show you too much of that side of him and seriously hurt you. Yo, good on OP for handling it the right way, especially at 17 as those people in the comment section said like, man, I, f I wish I was as smart and had that foresight uh, when I was your age. I wish I had a 6'2", 250 pound friend from high school. That guy probably flunked a few times, right? But it doesn't matter, because he's a great friend, and OP got out of that situation, and the dad was like, hey, by the way, your PlayStation, gone. Your PSP, gone. Your TikTok, deleted. You don't even get food tonight, son. I hate you, Robert. Okay, well, that's just child abuse. But you know what? Hopefully, Robert learns his lesson, and hopefully his parents get involved, and show him how to treat a woman better, and just how to be a better person. But again, thankfully, Quentin and OP got out unscathed and OP is going to work on herself for a while and just uh, overcome everything that happened and I'm sure she'll be fine in the long run. But anyway guys, that is the end of the video. What do you think about this story or um, pineapples? I don't know. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye!